Hi guys, Pete and Roxy here with you today, and today we're talking all things chakras. A beginner's guide to understanding what chakras are, and a bit of an idea as to the ones where you'd be more in or out of balance. Guys, as always, we appreciate you watching our channel. Stay through to the end because we're going to talk about, at the end, ways in which you're able to use meditation to help your chakras into balance. But for now, let's get started on understanding the chakras and just talking about how they affect us in our day-to-day -day life. And if you're enjoying what we're saying, please uh, put a little question down below in the comments or hit that like button. And of course, subscribe if uh, you're on this awakening journey and you would like tips, tricks and guidance and encouragement because that is the purpose of this channel, to help you on your spiritual awakening journey. So the chakras, we're going to start today with the chakras, which are basically the energy centers in the body and they run up our spine and you can picture them as like spinning orbs or of light, spinning balls of light, each having a different color and a different vibration. So the first chakra is the root chakra, the color red. And when you're in balance, in the root chakra, you feel grounded, you feel secure, safe, comfortable, and you feel at peace, you know, you're comfortable in the world around you and your, your ability to live along peacefully and comfortably and know that everything's probably going to be working out okay in the world around you. But if you're out of balance, then you can't, you're unsure about the future, you're unsure day to day, you tend to feel unsafe, insecure, you tend to feel like you've got like a feeling, subtle feelings of anxiety, like something could go wrong, what's going to happen next. And if it's overstimulated in that area, then you're going to feel like then you need to overcompensate for these things. So often someone who is out of balance in the root chakra is an overachiever. It's the sort of person who is out there trying to accumulate as much as possible to make themselves feel safe, secure, to make themselves feel comfortable. And often it's the incorrect intention for the mindless accumulation of things, material, being materialistic, being sp like really focused on finances and re overly focused on thinking that if they've got their physical world around them secure, then they, then they can relax. And of course, if they're out of balance, often they never get to that point. So relate those things back to the color red and your root chakra. I find also root chakra in a negative sense when it's out imbalanced is like someone's greedy or they're mm. following their ego um, and they're chasing that wealth with the wrong intention. They're only doing it for their self ego and not for the highest and greatest good of all. So, you know, those are the types of um, personality traits that you can find when your root chakra is imbalanced. And it's pretty common, hey, it's that one, actually. It's very common. You know, humanity's been born and grown through a financial kind of structure and, and you know, told we buy a mortgage, we get the cars and constantly accumulate so much for safety and security, which is incorrect. Correct. Yeah, so, yeah. so guys, when you're on the spiritual awakening journey, just so you know, often the ones people have the biggest challenges with are the root chakra and the heart chakra. So we're getting to the root chakra, uh, to the heart chakra in just a moment. So, okay, so let's move on to the next one, the color orange and the sacral chakra. Yep, so that's joy, pleasure, our sexuality, it's um, nurture and co-creation. They're all the things that are in this region and it's in our reproduction section, our chakra in the center. It's a good one, this yeah, one. Yeah, it's where all one. the passion and yeah. the physical intimacy and like if, it, if it's in balance, you, you feel as a human uh, loving, nurturing, and it's in the sexual uh, nature. And you, like you, you feel like you, you have this tendency you want to touch, caress, express your affection and your love and your joy. And underlying it is this 
urge, right, this desire to reproduce. That's that right. That it can get out of balance. Yeah, so a lot of people's is actually <laughs> imbalanced and mine was as well. And um, things like no sex drive um, often occurs. Um, and I know that this happens with a lot of ladies after they have their babies. For some reason, it gets imbalanced. So if that's you, maybe you need to look at balancing your sacral chakra. Um, it, it's also fear of intimacy. So, you know, you might overthink having to have sex with your husband, which is an imbalance, like, number one. Again, like, if that's occurring with you, your sacral chakra is probably imbalanced. Yeah. yeah. Now, next we're moving on to the colour yellow and we're going to be talking about our solar plexus, which is basically just under the rib cage, at the base of the rib cage there, around that sort of area where the ribs come up to the sternum. That's where the sacral chakra is. So when we're focusing in on this spinning orb of light, we're talking about this is your drive, your personal power your self-confidence, your feeling that you can make things happen, that you feel strong as a person and with your ability to be able to create and use your will and your focused effort to achieve a task. If that solar plexus chakra gets blocked or it is shut down, you tend to feel powerless helpless, a victim of circumstances outside your control. You feel like it's difficult to be able to create change in your life. And there's, there's no real motivation there. There is no real drive. And you're just feeling powerless as a person. So if you've ever had feelings like that, it could be that that solar plexus chakra is out of balance. And if it is overstimulated, um, you have ego and um, like you're chasing so much. It's a little bit like that ego um, in your root chakra, but it's overstimulated to uh, once again accumulate more. So if it's overstimulated, it's probably not imbalanced either. Yeah, um, like yeah. an overachiever. Yeah. Someone who just wants to achieve for the sake of achievement. It's just like they've got to go out and conquer the world. That would be uh, when it's overstimulated. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the heart chakra. When you're on your spiritual awakening, this is the one of the most important to be able to open up and get in contact with. Look, they're all important, but this is the one that can be a challenge because this is where we're learning to what, get in contact with our feelings, right? Yep. So the heart chakra is green and it's connected to the earth. And um, we really like the color green. It's a beautiful color. And when your heart chakra is open, you have like unconditional love, compassion, kindness, you show gratitude and give thanks lots. You feel like really centered and at peace. And, you know, you're thinking about unity and oneness of humanity and yourself. So your heart chakra is super, super open and, you know, you're forgiving too. And um, it's such a beautiful emotional um, center because when, when it's open, our emotions are like on fire. You can feel your emotions and you feel all the love, the joy, the bliss, and it's um, truly a magical heart center. <laughs> yeah, it's, look, it's the ability to be able to feel and to get in contact with your emotions, which helps you with your emotional clearing. So this is how the heart chakra ties into your spiritual awakening journey, because to be able to release trapped negative emotion, you need to be able to identify what that emotion is. It's not really enough to go, I don't know, but it was just bad. If you can go into, it was unworthy, unloved, it, um, you know, feelings of bullying, neglected, etc., etc. If you can be quite specific in your sensitivity to your own feelings and your emotions as your heart chakra opens, then you're better able to clear those emotions. But as a side of that, what happens is you're more sensitive to other people's emotions as well. So the subtle things that you may have missed before, because you know, you were like a block of concrete. And I know I was to a certain extent. I mean, I, I could feel and I think I was reasonably 
above, you know, okay at it, but certainly not at a level where I needed to be. And what I found was is by going in and working on opening my heart and doing meditation and exercise and journaling and writing out and getting myself to get in contact with my emotions, which was opening my heart chakra, my sensitivity to others expanded as well. And, and if it's too expanded, then often you're too concerned about everyone else and you put everyone else first, their feelings instead of your own. Have you ever found yourself doing that where you're a people pleaser? I mean, there's another thing I used to do. A lot of us do it. We put other people's feelings and emotions and thoughts before ours and we put ourselves second. And often we suffer because we're too worried about keeping other people happy overactive in that area and it's not in balance and it's it's affecting how we feel as humans as we move through life so now we move on we go well, into the no, blue hang on so yeah? it's um if it's closed the yeah. um feelings are you know you're feeling hatred for other people um you know you're you're you've got trust issues and you know different things like that because your heart center is closed um, and you're not connected to your own self. Like you, you can't feel your own emotions um, and you can't feel because you hate so much and you're putting that bad energy out there. That's because your heart center is not open or imbalanced or blocked. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the next one is your throat chakra, which is um, blue and it's just about here on the neck and it is all about communication, creative um, expression and um, when you're feeling confident and a leader, that is when your um, your throat chakra is fully open. Yeah, your ability to be able to clearly express an idea, but you know, most importantly, clearly express and articulate your feelings and your opinions because very often if we're blocked in the throat chakra it can be because because there is a pattern of being told that our opinion doesn't matter or we were told as a child to you know shut up we're not to have an opinion kids are to be seen and not heard and all these sorts of things so little kids they grow up with this belief of i won't speak up or if i put my opinion forward people mightn't like it or what if i'm wrong and we can get shut down in the throat chakra and this manifests itself in people being terrified to speak up, to have an opinion, to put forward their idea, to have confidence in their self-expression, and they get shut right down. And their ability to feel powerful as a person in an, and how that gets expressed through their words is greatly affected. If it's overstimulated, you can't shut someone up. <laughs> the person is opinionated and they're trying to own someone who's pushy and they're trying to push your or their idea on you or they're trying to get you to agree or they just go and go and go and go and you sit there thinking, oh my goodness, and it's like they like the sound of their own voice. Or they gossip, they talk about everybody. Uh, yeah. Overstimulated in the throat chakra. Okay, now let's move on to the third eye which is purple and it's connected to your pineal gland and it's your intuition, it's your gifts and abilities, it's your connection um, down to get messages from higher intelligent realms and of course source. Um, you're creative in this space and you can see visuals and you can go beyond this realm into multi-dimensional realms, which I can happily say i can do <laughs> oh you're super strong in this one yeah. uh listen um if you'd like your third eye to be a little more open and you're, you're a bit blocked in this one then things are a bit foggy <laughs> you, have a, you have a challenge with visualization you need to really uh, work on it and you need to sort of let go and trust a bit as as one that i feel you know because if we're overstimulated in that third eye or completely shut down it can have an effect on our ability to be able to connect to our intuition to higher intelligence uh, and to truth and and clear knowings about a person or a situation or events in our life so that if, if we're shut down poor visualization feeling foggy not feeling any sort of connected there's no intuition there and overthinking 
Yeah, it, it all everything's to do with the thought. The person doesn't really use any sort of intuition at all. Um, and really, it's that that is an area which for a lot of people can go completely dormant. So the next one is our crown chakra, and that is connection to source. And we'd call this color violet. Yeah. Um, and basically, it's an energy center that's connected to the high realms, and that's when our um, when we're connected, our and open, and it's fully open. We are going to get um, lots of higher intelligent downloads, um, upgrades of like light codes and different things like that. So you're going to be conscious. You're going to feel like you are. Blue bliss in a bliss state of being um you're going to feel love and um you're going to have peace and you're going to have your purpose down pat like it's fully crystal clear in your mind when it's fully open that what your mission or your purpose may be yeah it's a beautiful one to get right because as you go through your spiritual awakening journey as you clear away those emotions, you know, you get the baggage off your back and you just start to connect with the real you and yourself. It, you feel more joy in your day-to-day -day life. And guys, this is what we're moving towards. If the goal of a spiritual awakening journey is in part to help you to become the best version of yourself and then also to learn to look beyond the self a connection to source and to realize the truth of who you really are, what your purpose really is, what you can give back and to really find fulfillment. When you're moving in that direction and you're in balance in that violet energy center and that chakra is flowing, you're in the right place at the right time. There is synchronicities. You have a lot of joy and happiness and feelings of bliss. And the opposite to that is someone who maybe have achieved a lot in their life, yet they feel lost, uh, particularly spiritually lost. You know, they wonder now, what's the point of it all? Like they, they question their purpose. They're wondering how they can feel real fulfillment. Often a person who is pondering questions like this may have achieved in financial areas or achieved in areas of their family, and they get to this point where they're searching for self. And in searching for self, you begin to realize that you may not have your crown chakra open and you may not be open for that connection to the divine. Because when the connection to the divine comes in, then all of a sudden that crown chakra can lead you open to these wonderful qualities of an imbalanced crown chakra. And I think when your crown chakra is open as well, you have a bigger perspective on humanity earth universe and you um are kind of looking at looking at it from an aerial perspective and your goal and your mission is for unity consciousness and it's like oneness and togetherness and for all of us to elevate and raise our vibration together it changes um you know me i <laughs> kind of perspective and you move into a perspective of um everyone and the greatest good of all for the greatest good of all um yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. And it that's is. what it is. It's connectedness and togetherness and harmony. So what we do, guys, in our meditation programs is we've actually taken the seven chakras and converted them into a series of mental experiences that can enable you to enter an alpha and a theta state so that as you meditate, you imagine yourself moving through each of the energy centers of your body, moving them into balance, visualizing them expand. And as you do that, and as you move through the process, you're actually stimulating each of those energy centers, moving them into balance, but you're slowing your brain rhythms down. So you're moving out of our thinking beta level of the brain, and you're making the alpha and the theta levels of your brain your predominant brain rhythm. So the term becoming an alpha master is something which we have incorporated into our practical meditation program. And there'll be a link at the end of this video so that you can go and try this out and go down through the colors, slowing the brain rhythms down, moving the energy up and down your spine so that first of all, you can move yourself towards balance. But you know, guys, in the background, get your brain into that focused state 
so that you're more powerful as a person and you can use this for manifestation. You can use this for raising your energy, dissipating your stress and helping you to build the qualities of the real you. So guys, that brings us to the end of our Energy Center Chakra Talk. So if you like it or have any questions, reach out to us. It's a lot of information to take in, but this is the foundation and gateway to higher elevation in consciousness. And this is the beginning of everything in intuition, gifts and abilities opening up and connecting with higher intelligence, just like Pete and I have been able to do. And the seed is in all of us. So every single person can do this, including you. So um, we hope this um, video finds you well and can help you on your journey. And give us a like, a thumbs up if you like it, and we'll see you soon.